Good afternoon and welcome to our latest webinar. Today we're going to be joined by Gemma Colley from West Yorkshire Police and their communications team. She's their digital development assistant and we're going to be looking at uh, SharePoint as intranets. Now over the last few months we've been doing a lot of work around how SharePoint be used for collaboration, file sharing and, and managing access to things. But one of the other elements of it is how it could be used as our new intranet for solutions. Now, for the last few months, Gem has been working on creating a new version of a, their intranet on modern SharePoint, enabled through 365 and the NEP for West Yorkshire Police. So she'll be talking through some of her experience. And we know there's a lot of interest in this because it's it's, just, it's an easy saving for a start. We don't, you know, we pay for SharePoint as part of the 365 environment. It's included in everything we do. So why wouldn't we use it anyway? But it's actually so much more than the cost saving that you get from the, the platform. It's, it's There's so much more capability than we, we actually need to perhaps thought about in the past and it gives us a different way of looking at SharePoint. Now this week I'm actually at the uh, Association of Police Communications uh, Annual Academy, our learning event, where I've been talking this morning about the 365 suite and we wanted to, to plan this webinar to co coincide with that week so that those colleagues in police communications in particular who haven't been able to make it to AppCom itself can still get an event and learn from and of course I've already told everybody that uh, they can play back the recording whilst they're busy learning about uh, uh, an issue that uh, hit a force recently so we'll make sure that uh, more audience and we will be following this event up with a workshop next month and details will be in the chat so you can do that all there on the events page of the transformation website so please get involved in that in a few moments i'm going to ask Gemma to share her experience and knowledge from the journey the force has been on uh, but what we perhaps need to reflect on is that for some time now uh, the way that we communicate has changed the way we communicate and engage at work is influenced by our personal lives and we all live our lives on social media and we expect content to be served to us and be more relevant and the challenge for us is to create content that's relevant accessible and shareable and that's where 365 can be in there there isn't a silver bullet in terms of SharePoint solving your internal comms and engagement elements but it's certainly an important base for which having a good enga engagement and communications platform it's really essential that your SharePoint your one version of the truth internally is something that actually is effective accessible and user friendly and of course the benefit of the 365 suite is it's very accessible you've got all the accessibility tools in there and we have got webinars on accessibility which you can play back to understand some of that capability as normal we want this to be an interactive session so please pop your questions into the chat we'll be posting useful links into the Q&A as well uh, and then we'll put those questions to Gemma and try and answer them between us as we go over the next 30 minutes or so so you can get this in there so I can see that Leicestershire are all very in currently developing so very interesting this so thanks for that comment and keep your questions coming in the video will be available on the website afterwards so it's transformation.police.uk forward slash watch to watch the video it's probably be tomorrow morning we put that live so Gemma if you could share your screen uh, but uh, so we're ready to bring you in in a second and let's get into the detail from West Yorkshire first of all Gemma could you explain why you've been changing your internet and what sort of challenges have you been facing yeah of course so obviously um now we're getting uh, the office 365 package um it makes sense um ultimately to be moving forward and developing and advancing because it is so much better and um, it's much more intuitive as well and um, the current intranet that we do have um whilst it, it you know serves a purpose we do tend to find a lot of the time that there's quite a, a barrage of information goes on there and it, it's not necessarily clear who that's relevant for um so i think one of the the ways that we tried to sort of resolve that was almost separating the news a little bit and and keeping it a, a, similar to sort of the BBC news site so um, it's a bit more distinguishable which area um, things are relevant for so yeah it, it's essentially one of the the key things was looking at what we've got um, what doesn't work well and how can we improve that um, and I'm a, bit, a big believer of simplicity is key um, so as we often get asked in corporate comms to sort of uh, wave a magic wand and make something look uh, much better and and uh, <laughs> more straightforward that's that's what I got tasked with um, if I'm honest I'd, I'd not used this before it was complete completely new to me 
Um, but when IT set the page up itself, it's, it's very, um, it's already set up really um, in a sense that that the sort of hero web part that you can see here, um, it was actually, um, it had links to specific uh, pages that Microsoft had set up. So it was really good and, and there is quite a lot of, you know, reading to do, but once you get going with it and you really give it a try, you're away and it is so much more straightforward than the current SharePoint that we have now. So it, yeah, it was, it's just more of a case of just looking at what you've currently got, what, what does work, what doesn't work and then, and then going forward with that. Um, so initially when this page was set up, it was kind of a case of, um, yeah, just experimenting initially, uh, but also keeping in mind, you know, corporacy and, and wanting it to mirror the things that do work now. So obviously we've got, you know, like your, your navigation pane at the top. Now, a good thing with this is that you can actually drill down into the different areas rather than having to click into corporate services. You can now actually just without even clicking into that department, you can go to a specific department. So it's, it has got a lot more um, intuitive sort of features to it, but it is much, much more straightforward and, you know, eye catching as well. So there's a lot of it's very fun. dynamic, Gemma. So it, with the news element and the brief, so does the page seem to update its update as you add more content? It does, yeah. I mean, it's it's just so easy to add content as well, um, you know, because th there's different features available and different web parts as well. So, I mean, it's very much within your sort of power to to make it look as you wish. Um, there is something called the SharePoint Lookbook, um, which I have actually tabbed up here. If anybody sort of wants to just have a little, you know, look at that, that is very Microsoft led, though, so it's not specifically um, you know, force, um, you know, set out. But if you did want any ideas, then you can obviously have a look on there just for a, a bit more information. Um, but yeah, so we, we had some requirements, which was essentially to separate the news. So obviously we've got an awful lot of staff and officers within um, the force. So sometimes that news is not necessarily relevant to staff so it was about separating that news and making it just a little bit easier for people to understand what's relevant to them obviously as well you can use actual other um software that 365 provides so this is a video that's been put through from streams um so it's it's very adaptable you can the fact that you can use other software and um, forms for example another another thing that we will be add into this once it goes live because it's not it's currently in a draft state at the moment but once it does go live we'll be putting a form on for people to um feedback so because obviously it's, people don't always like change um they might not necessarily um like certain things about it so it's important to get that feedback obviously understanding that we can't change absolutely everything that everybody asks for but it, there is the option there to have forms and there's so many different you know sections that you can add on so if you just want to click button and um, to get to external appeals um, you might want the you know login on system to uh, log your shift or you know you can have a twitter feed there's just so many different things i've set up an events calendar as well granted it needs uh, filling in but again this is a draft state so um, if you have got any particular events that are coming up that you do want to um you know put out there then that's a good opportunity but yeah just splitting up the news um and also you know linking to campaigns there's so many different things but ultimately it's got to work for you as a force what's right for one force isn't necessarily going to be right for another um you know you can have banners as well for example so if you have got an internal campaign or something um such as the employee assistance program then that can go on a campaign but it's just so easily changeable and adaptable that you know it obviously it's good to keep consistency and uh, you don't want to be constantly changing it because I think people can get quite frustrated with that but it is possible to do that um so yeah it, it is so much more intuitive and and I found it quite simple and straightforward to put together as well so Gemma, you've not actually used any outside consultancy or supporting to develop the site. Are you using basically the out-of-the-box solution as it comes? 
Essentially, yeah, and I think sometimes that's probably the best approach. Um, by all means, um, you know, I've, I've obviously engaged with the webinars. There's been a lot of useful webinars that I've um, gone on. I've spoke to Microsoft, so Nick from Microsoft, and um, obviously, you know, you, best practice is a good thing, you know, just picking the brains of people who've been there and done it as well. Um, but a lot of this was using the information that's essentially there and um, like I say when you do initially set the page up there are links to the Microsoft um, site so I, I did quite a bit of reading on that to develop myself but I, I'm very much a doer so I'll learn as I go and um, famous last words I've not broken anything so far and I'm not intending on breaking anything so you know just try and um, if, you, if you have been given the task to sort of develop your page you don't be scared and um, give it a go and um, and it's you know again adding images as well is one thing that we have looked at or i've certainly been putting together is some corporate guidance as well so when it comes to people setting up their district and departmental pages we want we don't want to pull the strings too much on people and, and sort of stop them from having a level of freedom but again this is a, a false site we do need to have a level of corporacy um, so I've put some guidance together um, which includes a bit of guidance about accessibility as well, which is really key at the moment. So whenever you sort of put in the images on, there is an option to actually add alt text on there as well. Um, probably not a great example because that does have text on it, but wherever you put images on, try avoid having text uh, on the image itself, but you can you know use the actual um, software and add the text which will all be screen read as well so so that's really handy and um, and accessibility like i say is key for 365 at the moment and it's something that really needs sort of putting in the guidance as well for other people so we've also had um i'm working with it at the minute to set some templates up so when it comes to the district and departmental pages being set up they will have a little bit more support there um, and it will just help them um, when they want to develop because we're all we've all got different abilities and some people will want to go off and, and be a little bit more adventurous um, albeit keeping in the realms of fur uh, coffee but um but some people will come to this and feel quite nervous and probably will feel a little bit more comfortable that they have a template to work with that is you know where shorts please if i'd um and <laughs> also you can with the images as well we're looking to set up an actual image library because you do have the option to add images that you can pull them from the stock images from microsoft but they are quite americanized and um, which won't necessarily suit everybody and um, so there is the option to actually set up your own um corporate uh, image library which you can then get your imaging team to add uh, stock images too so it just it just keeps it that little bit more um structured in that sense so yeah so one of the points as well is how are you going to do that hub and spoke approach um you know how do you empower departments to do because this isn't a site that will be completely content managed by the corporate comms team is it it's the departments going to be managing their content and those of you that joined our webinar around with the tsb earlier this year well, heard about their hub and spoke approach is that how you've approached it in west yorkshire yeah i mean it's it's all ongoing work so initially i got asked to do the the front page design so the our amazing project team and it team are working quite um in the background really to to get those migrated across now that's a work in progress this will essentially go live before the departmental and district pages go through it's not ideal but this can go live because it can still link to the external uh, to the old pages now what we really want to to have really is for the the local districts and departmental um sort of spots and authors to have control of their pages and, and almost we want to encourage them to be putting on their own news items at the minute the the news sort of section within districts and department departments is just not suitable it just brings up a tiny box and um but what we want to do going forward to to almost stop a barrage of information going on the front page as well is encourage people to use their own districts and departments to put news items on so yeah it does need to be um you know 
we we can't be responsible for the entire internet it's just quite an impossible task so we do need people to have a level of control now i did set up a separate news section as well um which i'll just go on to and it's got pretty much the same as, as what was on the front page there but we have also set it so it's got the different districts as well so that could be quite useful actually if somebody needs is from is based in Wakefield that needs to go to Leeds and they might just want to check that district page just to see you know for example the lift might be broken I'm sure they'll put more interesting updates than that but it's just quite a handy thing so people can keep in tune with what's going on in their different areas and because it, the site is so intuitive as well and um, it will pull the information through so you just add the particular site so once Bradford set up their their page, for example, we from this side just need to tick that that needs to come from the Bradford page and it will automatically pull through. So it's really, really intuitive and it's a, a, an amazing piece of kit, to be honest. It's yeah, very impressive. So we use the news aggregator for a great deal and what colleagues will know who've used the say the enabling centre, the NEP enabling centre, that is of course is a SharePoint site built as an extranet but it's basically the same solution and I have the news posts that I post in there about the stories from the NEP, they get posted into there but then they automatically aggregate into the PDS news channel automatically so I post what once to one part of SharePoint and then that comes straight across and pulls it into there. So you've got that capability as well, haven't you, Gemma? Absolutely, yeah. And another thing I've not really touched on yet, but I will, is um, departmental pages. So this is um, at the moment a bit of a draft page that I've set up, but um, it was almost to do a bit of test, um, test work really to see how the news pages pull through. But the other good thing, which I will refer back to, is when somebody wants um, an article put on the front page, for example, they will probably create that in their own district or departmental page. But then once they create that item, they can actually get the link for it and then just simply share that with the, the person who runs the front page. And then it's just a case of adding the link rather than duplicating pages. So that's a really handy um, thing as well. Uh, but sort of from the departmental pages, you're probably more likely to have your quick links. Um, you may have noticed that on the front page I didn't have really any quick links because at the minute our front page that we have is just full to the brim of quick links and news and it's a bit all over the place. Um, what I've actually done is I've set up an A to Z um, so people can go to that and then find the relevant place but obviously with district and departmental pages there may be more need for um, you know quick links but one thing that you can do, you can add actual images, um, whether that's from the, you know, the sort of Microsoft stock library, but I would probably suggest to just stick to the straightforward um, icons. So when you go to actually add um, these tiles, you've got all sorts of different options. You can make them small, you can make them large, you can do it without the wording. Um, but from an accessibility purpose, I would always try to stick to something quite simple and straightforward and it does look quite clean. Um, but yeah, it just it just demonstrates the different type of sort of feel that you can. I mean, this is very much mirroring what the home page um, is set up, really. It's quite similar to that, but it just gives you an idea of how that, you know, you can change the colour if you wish. Um, you know, again, I've put a bit of that in the guidance of maybe not bright yellow. Uh, you need to sort of be considerate of the uh, the colours and stuff because at the end of the day we are a force. So, but yeah, it's just amazing. And you as page owner have got some control over people not being able to change those colours and you've got quite granular control over what people can do and can't do. But David Bell from your team mentions a really good point about the mobile friendliness and the way that the screen adapts and certainly those quick links. I, I've built them into our site at the moment. They look stunning on a mobile phone, really accessible. It almost looks like an app. And so yeah. similarly, you see you shrinking down the width of the page there and the way that the page is just adapting for mobile instantly. There you go. So that's what it would look like on your portrait landscape, portrait mobile phone. And you see you still maintain that accessibility, but a really strong visual usability as well, Therese. 
Yeah, it is. It's fantastic. Thank you, David. Um, I can always rely on David <laughs> making sure I don't miss anything. But yeah, it's it is. It's so much more adaptable, and um, you know, we have got officers out there using their devices primarily, or um, you know, people with tablets, for example. So it's really important that it works for absolutely everybody. If I can ask a couple more questions that have come in from from colleagues. So, how much? consultation have you been doing before designing this or has it been more of an iterative approach as you've gone along and consulted with people? It's a bit of both I would say um, at the start it was more just me kind of figuring things out but obviously I've been working closely with um, IT and the project team now they've been quite busy really migrating um, 365 so in in an ideal world um and if we had more budget and more money and you know we'd have a bigger team and there'd be somebody but that's never the way so um i have been sort of working on this and trying to put it together but at the same time what i i did do which i'd really recommend for people to do is to actually engage with your um colleagues and um, so what i did was a bit of a dip sample i think it was only approximately 200 people something like that um but that was a mix of um staff officers various roles across the force just to to sort of get feedback it was essentially very similar to what i'm doing now and demonstrating it and giving them a chance to have a good look and and getting feedback so i'd actually done a form and got them to feedback and say what they liked now i think it was about 97 percent of people liked it um the rest you know you can't win them all unfortunately not everybody's going to love it people can be quite sort of set in the ways and like what they like and, and there's nothing wrong with that but ultimately this is not just for me it's for everybody so it needs to work for everybody and yeah we need we need it to um to be useful and this is probably the first step in the process to develop the more intelligent internet as you go along as 365 rolls out because obviously then you can start targeting content in the news feeds and things like that as it goes along um a question have you been able to integrate any rss feeds into it uh, not, not, the um, not the minute it's not something i've really looked into doing but um as we've said before we're, we're very much trying to stay as much out of the box as we possibly can um I don't really want to be adding sort of coding or embedding too much because it's an ever evolving um, piece of software and Microsoft are constantly changing. Now, there is the risk there that if you start adding um, coding or putting nice fancy moving things on there, that potentially if Microsoft update, that could knock it out the, the way. So I, I'm very much a believer, like I say, in keeping things simple and straightforward. I can't see why an RSS feed wouldn't, wouldn't work. I'm sure it would, but it's not something I've looked into as yet. I shall put that on my list of something to check. Yeah. Though. And I think that's the point. We do want to create a community of people who share ideas. I was struggling with the quick links. I spoke to you and found the best way of doing it. And you know, we need to be sharing those things. Tony's put a really good point in. I certainly agree with Gemma that designing the SharePoint pages requires virtually no prior knowledge of creation experience. The tools are really easy to use and allow seamless integration to other native MS products such as Stream, Sways, Forms, etc. A file viewer I find really powerful. If you've got a document that you want everybody to have view of, you don't even have to put the link in. You can actually make the document visible in SharePoint. Uh, so there's there's loads of capability that you can do in this. And of course, if you want to feed in content from the external website, one of the quickest things you can do is a news link function where you grab the URL of a story that's on your website, post that as a news link, it takes about 30 seconds and you've built a news article in SharePoint and the content never moves from the external site. It's phenomenally quick. Yeah, it's, it is. It's an amazing site. I'm really impressed with it. And the other thing as well is you can actually link your um, homepage to Teams as well. It's not something I've done yeah. um as yet but you know it's another way to get to the home page um yeah so and that that's a really good point because everybody's using teams what you can do is create a tab or a button in your team's environment that takes you to this and if it's a tab in the team's channel you can actually view sharepoint in teams which sounds really complicated but it isn't it just creates what you've got on screen now in with a team's wrapper around it on the left and across the top sort of thing so you can work in that 
space. Uh, so again, you're moving things through. Uh, Gemma, how long has it taken you to get to this point? Because I know you've not been on it full time and uh, it's a bit sporadic at times. So how much time have you been spending on it? Um, to be honest, the the initial stage when I first got given the task to put it together, the actual adding everything in and making the page look somewhat, um, you know, somewhat of a, an actual site didn't take too long. Um, it's more the behind the scenes type of stuff that takes longer. Um, again, obviously, you know, it's not just my only role. I have got a lot of other things that I'm I'm tackling at the minute with work. So it, it's like I say, in, in a, a normal world or a, a better world where we probably have more money, if I was doing it just all the time, it probably would have been live um, by now. But that's never the way. We, things always get knocked back. But the actual making the page look a page in itself didn't take that long. It's just you've got to also think that ultimately you need to make sure that the links work. So that takes time. Um, and then, you know, the other thing as well, it's whilst this may go live, like I've mentioned, the departmental and district pages are still they need to migrate over. So that's going to be more work on top once they do go live. It's just making sure that all the links are updated. OK, well, we're running out of time as a new reward and there's a few more questions in there which we were not going to be able to get to. Unfortunately, we can't show the current uh, West Yorkshire Police Internet because what we obviously do is this does go out publicly, so we didn't want to put any sensitive information up there uh, on there so we can we can do that. that. Um, can you make an NEP site to, uh, a site visible to other forces? You can. That's what we've done with the extranet via the NEP but that's only to guests and the link will be in the chat so if you want to become a guest of ours you can do that but typically these are force intranets for the force and if you are bringing collaborators in as guests then they, they could have some access to it as certainly part of it. I'm just going to try and wrap us up because we always try to get this into that 30 minutes and we know that that, that does work. We are planning a, a detailed workshop in a couple of weeks time the link is in the events page on the Transformation website for comms colleagues, where we're going to bring together Gemma and colleagues from Cumbria who've been using Yammer in particular. And we'll have a, a, a police only environment, a virtual meeting where just police colleagues are in. So we can actually share live screens of current and future where there might be sensitive information, but also have a real discussion about what works, what doesn't, what hints and tips people have got, how to make things integrate. Because one of the other things you can do, of course, is embed a Yammer feed into your SharePoint site. So you don't even have to be on Yammer to see Yammer content and get involved in the conversation. So it's almost the possibilities are endless with this platform and that's what we want you to start to to think about and use as we move forward um do come to the workshop do watch these webinars there's all the webinars we've got and if you are a member of the police service at the moment and want to see some of the perhaps more per private content we've got around what others have, have already done we're happy to share that so just get in touch with myself through the NEP inbox NEP info at transformation.police.uk next week we're going to be looking at protective marking within 365 uh, and how we can be better at using that sort of very important sensitivity labeling that helps us to manage the flow of information around forces so we are going to be covering that next week so do join us then the week after we actually uh pausing our webinars for a week because that clashes with the road shows to forces which are a regular quarterly events that we support in the NEP. We'll be on the first day on the Tuesday afternoon as part of the Police Digital Service update. So you'll be able to get all the content about what's happening in the Police Digital Service and affecting your forces. So we won't be having a webinar on the 8th of December, but we'll be back the week after and we'll put post details as we get closer. Really interesting, at comms colleagues, uh, this week we've had about 100 views of our webinar on Sways. So we think Sway is certainly getting interested at the moment. So uh, if you do need any more support, please do get in touch. So hopefully you can join us again for our next webinar next week on protective marking. If ever you want to watch any of the other webinars, head to the website. They're all over there. There's going to be 52 available at the end uh, when I post this one up later on today. And thank you so much, Gemma, for joining us today really interesting really looking forward to the workshop and if anything any of the interest has gone gives us an indicator of what's going to happen with sharepoint as intranets and the use of yammer use of teams and police comms there's it's really going to take off over the next few months as people get more and more involved so thanks everyone for joining us and we'll see you next week thanks a lot